Hi guys, well next up we have the MSI X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. A big name, which also seeks to deliver on big features. Now the Gaming Pro Carbon actually debuted under the Z170 chipset in 2016 and it's been a continuation for MSI largely because that uh, monochrome type of design is very popular among system builders. The whole concept of this board is that it will satisfy users from both enthusiast and gamer camps. Trademark MSI features can be seen right across this board with quite a strong emphasis on storage which covers M.2, U.2 and SATA. The M.2 is there using a thermal cage. Now the original pricing for this board has just changed and so you guys can pick it up for 298 in the UK and then if you're over in the States it's going to be around about uh, 358 and so it is a little bit more expensive than the previous board that we had a look at uh, just this week however we do have a few extras which may or may not be of interest such as those U.2s as, as I mentioned the U.2 support and also things like LED debug but anyway we're going to be exploring all of the features on this board today and we hope you enjoy the video Okay, so here is the X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. So what we have is quite a simple design, but one which will blend in very well with other components. Usually we associate gaming boards with lots of colour and features which are in your face, but this is much more subtle. So we have a matte black PCB with ports and other elements which are black and silver. Now out of the box, this board comes with glossy carbon effect covers on the heatsinks, audio and rear I.O. But these covers are actually modular and they can be swapped out. Inside the packaging, MSI includes some covers which you can make use of in those different areas. And something which is really cool is that MSI has even gone away and designed some custom Vortex.net covers for use on this board. And so this demonstrates how you can swap things up and alter the appearance. Combined with this, we also get some RGB lighting which can be tweaked with MSI's Mystic Light. MSI also include a single RGB LED header so you can make use of lighting strips in your case. And as you would expect our MSI board here conforms to the standard ATX form factor which is widely compatible with most mid towers. As we move in for a look at the features we'll start with the CPU socket. And so this is the new socket 2066 supporting Intel's new Core X series and so that includes both the Skylake X and the KB Lake X processors. And as we mentioned in another video, if you've got a cooler there which is ready for LJ 2011, then you can fit that cooler to 2066 because the screws in the corners of the plate are the same diameter. And so you're not going to need an upgrade kit as such. Now our MSI board utilizes a 12 phase Dr. Moss power design and covering the PWM setup at the top there, we have a single heatsink with that swappable cover. And just behind, there is an 8 plus 4 CPU power connector to provide that extra juice for overclocks. Oddly enough, we don't get twin CPU fan headers on this board. There is just a single CPU header and then the dedicated header for the pumps. And then we have four additional fan headers, bringing the total there up to six. Moving on to the memory area, we of course have all eight slots there, which are reinforced with steel and which use DDR4 boost. And so in total, we can utilize up to 128 gig, up to 4266 megahertz, and XMP is available too. And just as a word of warning, if you are going to be using a quad core KB Lake X, then you will need to use those slots there on the side closest to the 24 pin connector. If you install them over on the other side, then they will not be recognized. And also in that area, we have twin USB 3 headers as well as a single USB 3.1 header from the cases there which support that newer standard. In the storage department, we have lots of flexibility. Uh, firstly, we have eight SATA 6G ports. Six are right angled, while two are top facing. And squeezed in between those SATA ports, we have U.2. Now it's fair to say that U.2 isn't all that common. Nevertheless, it is still good to see it available. And then last of all, we have twin NVMe PCI Express Gen 3 X4 M.2s. And those are able to deliver up to 32 gig a second. Now as an extra, we have what MSI term M.2 shields. These metal covers here sit on top of the drive. And on the inside there, we get a film of thermal padding with the intention there to lower the temperatures and therefore prevent any throttle. Behind these SATA ports, we have the Intel X299 chip with a large heatsink installed over the top. Now that does extend there up to the CPU socket, but part of it is just plastic and that is just for the design and the styling. And once again, that heatsink cover can be changed out with one of those included covers in the packaging. 
Next up is the PCI Express area, which has plenty going on. Here we have uh, four PCI Express 3.0 X16s and two PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 4, 16 and 8. Now, if you are going to be installing a multi-GPU configuration, then it's really the CPU which determines what modes you can use. A 44-lane CPU can allow us to use that dual 16 mode, while 28 and 16-lane CPUs will only allow 8 mode. Along the bottom edge of our MSI board, we have some additional buttons that we can take advantage of. The first one that is labelled Demo LED, and pressing that will cycle through a demonstration of the LED system which comes included. Now further along we have onboard power and reset buttons, and then a dual BIOS switch. And then lastly, almost hidden behind the SATA ports, we have the OC dial. And so that allows us to move through incremental overclock adjustments on the fly. And those increments can be set in the BIOS. Over on the left side of those PCI Express, we have the audio solution, which is aptly named Audio Boost 4. And if we just remove that cover, we can check out the actual components being used. And so at the heart of this is Realtek ALC1220, providing you there with up to 120 decibel signal to noise ratio and 7.1 channel. And along with that, we get the Chemicon audio caps for that high fidelity and warm acoustics and things like Depop protection and separated audio layers for the two channels. And then all of that is isolated to maintain a strong audio signal and to prevent any interference. Okay, and lastly, we arrive at the rear IO section of this board and there are lots of features present. Here we have the clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons, PS2 keyboard mouse combo ports, triple USB 2 ports, the Wi-Fi antennas there for our 802.11ac and the Bluetooth 4.2, a stack of four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, Gigabit LAN, that is via the Intel i219, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, that is in Type A and Type C, and then all of those audio ports there which are gold plated and they include the optical out. And so lots included there and it's great to see so many USB available. Having the clear CMOS and BIOS flashback is definitely something which will come in handy should you run into any problems with conflicting settings. So guys that is the X299 Gaming Pro Carbon AC. Again another sleek and tidy looking board with that monochrome approach to the styling. And what makes this MSI board a little bit different is the fact that we have those changeable covers on the heat sinks, the audio, and also the rear I.O. You know, the big push at the moment is obviously RGB lighting, which seems to be affecting and taking hold of every product imaginable. And so this is a bit of a softer modification, uh, which really gives you that opportunity to create something quite unique. However, if you do want to inject a bit of colour, we do of course have Mystic Light on this board and of course the RGB header so you can link it up to your lighting strips. Now, not everyone has access to a wired gigabit connection and so wireless is a necessity to some and uh, this AC version is going to come in handy for those people. And so with this we get the Wi-Fi unit which is dual band 802.11ac as well as Bluetooth 4.2. Now, in terms of performance, this board presented us with results which were consistently strong across the range of tests that we ran. And when we moved into overclocking, we weren't able to hit that 5.2, which is currently our best with the 7740X, but we did manage to hit 5 gig, which is still an excellent achievement. You know, the MSI BIOS is very easy to use, and it's actually one of my favorites to navigate and make use of. Now the full set of those benchmarks are going to be in the full review, which is going to be on the screen and in the description very soon. Uh, be sure to check that out for all those results and that video tour of the BIOS. And so that is it for me today guys, thanks very much for taking time out of your day to watch. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this board in the comments box below. Take care and I will see you guys next time.